Hi folks, here we are again. Uh, this is a Hornby uh, APT power car that uh, I've been sent uh, to have a look at by someone called Paul. Um, I I was offered the you know some coaches and the uh, the cabs and everything, but I said no no I'll just send the power car. Uh, I know the the couplings are a bit weird, so I've um, taped up the couplings underneath so they don't hit the track. Uh, so let's just see what this does. But I've, I've been told it runs very poorly and need, needs a push and has a slight burning smell. So let's power on. Ooh, hasn't done anything. Try reverse. No, nothing. Mm, nothing at all. Oh, well, there we go. That's full power. Yeah, that's not looking too healthy. Uh, right, let's get to the bench and have a look. Okay, so I'm hoping this will be fairly straightforward. It's just a Ringfield motor. But uh, looking at it, uh, the bogies are slightly different. Again, every time I look at one of the Hornby Ringfield motors, there's, there's a slight difference. I was hoping to be able to just lever the bogie out from the body, but the, you know, the clips that hold it to the body appear to be metal. So they're not going to bend. Um, the body appears to be in two halves with clips. There's clips there, there and there. And I dare say these ends clip on. Uh, I really don't want to break apart the body uh, unless I really have to. But I'm not saying there's a, there's a little screw. I don't know if you can see it there. There's, there's a little screw. Just there. And I'm wondering and hoping that if I undo that, it's going to release the clip to, to let the bogey out. So we'll undo it and see what happens. That's not going to work. I need that. Better glasses. But I've got a horrible feeling. I am going to have to open up the body. What is that? What does that do? Oh right, that <laughs> that releases the motor. Okay. Uh yeah, I'm gonna have to unclip this to get into it. That's that's a terrible design. Honestly, what a hobby thinking sometimes. Um so there's one there, one there, one there, one there, and that's <sighs> right, okay. I'm guessing that comes out right, okay let's we're just gonna have to get into this I think just a bit of pressure and a bit of leverage now so that's now opening down the side here but what happens at these ends there we go just ease them out the way a tiny wee bit and there we go. That wasn't too bad. All right, what we got? So, let's see that little screw that I took out releases the motor. I haven't seen one of these things before. This is, has the, the tilting thing, so I've often wondered how that worked. And it's, uh, all right, so that's what that's for. That sits in there. And that, uh, right, okay, I've got that. Uh, I'll take that off. And we'll look at the rest of that later. So, the Hornby Ringfield, we meet again. Uh, let's get rid of that. A little bit of tape across here. And yeah, the commutator's very dirty, so that's prob. I mean, this probably just needs a good clean. Um, we'll have to pull the wheels off to get into the, the, the commutator. The wheels. There we go. Uh, the axles are very, very dry and kind of tarnished looking, so I'll give them a good clean. Not too much uh, in the way of fluff and dirt in the gears, which is good. Uh, and we'll clean out those axles. We shall get into the, uh, the motor. Gears seem in okay condition. 
Right, so so this is loose, and uh, just when I'm handling it there, I can see one of the brushes has uh, fallen down into the uh, beside the commutator. So we'll need to get that off. Now, normally that would you would have to prise that off, so that's just come off very easily. So there's three clips broken on this uh, plate. There should be a clip there, a clip there, and a clip there. And there's one there. So that's why this fits on very loosely. So I will have to do something about this because the loose plate means the pressure uh, of the brushes on the commutator won't be right. So there's one of the clips. And I could try gluing that back on, but... We... Hold on a minute. <laughs> there's another one of the clips there. I think somebody has tried to glue that back on, but it's just come out. You know, gluing these clips is never going to work. So I think what I'm going to do, it's a bit drastic, but it uh, needs must really. Um, I think I'll drill a little hole through the plate into the, the casing of the motor. Uh, one there and maybe one there. And maybe put a couple of little sc screws in just to clamp the plate. To, to the motor casing. So I'm going to put the brushes into this contact cleaner and the springs because they're manky as well. You can see them fizzing away in there. So yeah I think the only way to uh, fix this plate onto the, the motor casing is to drill a couple of holes and fit a couple of screws and that should hopefully sort that Meantime, let's give the commutator a bit of a clean. Actually, no, before we do that, let's uh, see what's in here, because there seems to be a lot of black material just inside there. I don't know what it is. Hmm. We'll get rid of that. Dab on the T-cut. Once again, T-cut is doing a great job. But I think I'm maybe going to have to give it a wee bit more. Right, um, we'll get some contact cleaner on this. This commutator is up there with the, one of the dirtiest ones I've dealt with. It's uh, it's been a five cotton bud job. There we go. I think that that'll pretty much do it. Looking a bit better. And then I'm just going to blast some contact cleaner down there. Okay, we'll clean the wheels when we do the rest of them. Okay, so we want to drill the wee hole just there. Okay, so I've essentially just drilled through the plastic plate there and it's left a little mark on the, uh, the metal casing. So we shall now drill a hole there. Tap a little bit of thread on there. And then I just want to test fit the screw. Let them all go in. Which it does. Okay, I'm just removing the broken clips altogether because I don't want them working loose and getting into the motor mechanism. And I want the second hole to be about there. Again. 
Got a thread on the hole. Just make sure there's no nasty little bits of metal to get places they shouldn't. So hopefully the plate will now screw on nicely. And that's the other one. So now that plate is nice and secure and flush with the uh, the motor casing. I wonder why it was a bit dark. Didn't have my lamp on there. Right. Rinse the spring. Push that down. And give that a little bit of a bend. Right. Okay. What happens if I put a battery on this? If I can find my battery. There it is. Nothing. Okay, that's not working too well, and I strongly suspect it's the brushes and the springs are just uh, not the best. So I'm going to try some new springs and new brushes on this because I just don't think it's uh, doing what it should. Uh -huh. That seems okay. Alright, so we shall pop that back on there. So let's have a look at these gears. Yeah, a big lump of flash on there and on there. So we'll give these a, a file down. So we'll grease up these spindles with molly grease and pop these back on. I'm going to put a little touch of gear oil yeah, yeah. So just before I pop the uh, the wheels back in I'm just going to put a little bit of a Pico power lube on the, uh, the axle Make sure the gears on the wheels are clean then we can just push these back on. I'll just use the back to back gauge to make sure we're, we're in the ballpark. Alright, let's put this clip on. Alright, what happens when we put battery on now? That all seems a okay. Now, where does this go? That's got to go the wee holy, it's got to go there. So that's going to go in there like so. That'll go down in there. That's going to go in there. Okay, looking at the front mobile, it all seems relatively clean. Um, but I'm going to take it out, and interestingly, there's a different type of screw for this one. So I think there's been some jiggery pokery going on with this over the years. Rinse that out. Right, lift that out. All right, so there's no actual pick up on the front bogey it is just picking up through the chassis clean that through there's no brass bushing in this so it's just straight into the little chassis block and then hopefully it should be a case of putting this back together and that'll be that <laughs> famous last ones all right okay some of this pico power loop stuff which i'm just kind of trying um, I've heard good things and bad things about it, but I think for axles where you have an you know, electrical pickup, it's maybe a good idea to use that stuff. Um, people call this a conductive lubricant. It it says it reduces resistance and electrolytic action, and it's, it's electrolube. 
people call it power lube, but it is actually electrical lube, which is really meant for lubricating switches. All right, one feel on there, one feel on there, have a bit of the right way around, yes I have. Back to back gauge, squeeze. And then the next thing I'm going to do is wash my hands because I don't want to start uh, putting the, the body back together with my manky hands. All right, and then we connect that to there. And that to there. So I've just noticed with the, the motor bogey back in place, uh, why there was tape across the, the brush retainers there because they're, they're pretty much in contact with this and that's creating a short. Uh, so we don't want that. That's not a particularly uh, good design. Uh, I wonder if I can squeeze a bit of tape in there. Yeah. Put that in there and we'll give it a trim. Okay, uh, let's just put this on this little test track here. Because the last thing I want to do is get that body all clipped back together. Oh, it's got power. And find that this doesn't work. This should go. Hey. Okay. Uh, and actually, what I think we'll do is we'll stick it on the layout like this. Let's get some uh, fresh tape on these couplings. Right, okay. We'll go and stick this on the layout and see what happens. Okay, so let's power this up, see what happens. It's certainly running an awful lot better, but uh, it seems to have a slight problem with points. Um, hmm. Have we got a bit of a connection issue on that front bogey? See? Yeah. Okay, so I think the motor's working fine, um, but I'm not convinced about the... the uh, the pickup from the, the front bogey at all. So I'm going to have another look at this. Okay, so I just got the front bogey apart again, and uh, of course one thing I didn't do was clean the wheels. <laughs> Sometimes you just forget the uh, the most obvious and simple things. Right, let's go and see if that's made any difference. Okay, so power on. Oh, that's a lot better. That's heaps better. Right, I think we'll get the body back together and that'll be that. Okie dokie. Let's see if we can put this uh, back together. Um, so basically all this really needed was a good clean, a good service. Um, the motor was in a bit of a state. Front plate loose, commutator all gunged up, brushes worn, springs all dirty, axles all dry and dirty. So, uh, a bit of TLC, and I think it should be fine. New brushes can sometimes take a wee bit of running in, but other than that, I think this should be okay. Right. Come on, don't start playing silly buggers with me now. I really hope this works. See if this stops working after getting this back together. I'll not be happy. I hate things that clip together like this, I really do. I mean, what's wrong with a couple of screws? There we go. Right, okay. Let's go and give it another go. Very nice and smooth. I must say that uh, tilting thing is actually quite cool. 
Okay, so that's this uh, Hornby APT power car running again. Uh, so, what's next? Well, stay tuned. Catch you later, folks.